Hey guys, I've had a few requests on YouTube regarding my Bowden extruder setup and the components that I've used to assemble it. So this video will be de dedicated to the Bowden extruder setup that I use with my Prusa i3 3D printer. If you currently are using the direct drive setup and you've been wondering about uh, the Bowden configuration, then stick around, this video is for you. You'll first need to download and print out a Bowden extruder mechanism of your choice. There's plenty to choose from on Thingiverse and various other websites online. The one that I've been using is quite simple and it's been working for me so I haven't bothered to change over to something more exotic. This one's called the Compact Bowden Extruder. Uh, it's available on Thingiverse. It's been created by a gentleman by the name of uh, Schlotz. He's created this in OpenSCAD and has attached the original OpenSCAD file. That's allowed me to go into the code of that file and adjust the default um, compact Bowden extruder to match the Mark 7 drive gear. So I've gone ahead and I've uploaded my STL files of these two uh, onto my my made page within Thingiverse. So you can either go ahead and choose this particular one for the Mark 7 drive gear, or you can uh, obviously download another one of your choice. Um, within the base of the uh, Bowden extruder mechanism, there is a nut trap. So I have an M3 nut that I've um, jammed down there. And we also have the idler section. You'll need to mount the Bowden setup somewhere on your 3D printer. I have the Bowden setup mounted on my Z-axis uh, threaded rod support. I've um, knocked up a couple of these plastic blocks. Uh, these are also available on Thingiverse to simply attach the Bowden mechanism to. You're also going to have to download and print out a compatible Bowden X-axis carriage mount for your hot end. I have the E3D version 6 and I've designed up an, an E3D compatible uh, Bowden X carriage mount. Feel free to download and print this one out, otherwise there's plenty of other choices on Thingiverse. In front of us here is an assortment of parts you'll need to assemble your Bowden extruder mechanism. Some of these parts you may have a spare lying around, other parts you may need to purchase. Uh, the first item here is the PTFE or Teflon tube. Uh, this material is, has a very slippery uh, surface to it. It allows the filament to travel within the tube, um, almost frictionless. Because I'm using 1.75mm uh, filament, the tube that I've chosen has a 2mm internal diameter. The outer diameter is 4mm. Uh, that connects to a push fit connector, a PTFE uh, push fit connector. So we have a locking ring here where the tube simply uh, pushes into and locks in. Uh, the length that I'm using here is about 70 centimeters, but this is probably a little bit too long. You could easily get away with 50 or even 40 centimeters. You'll need a stock standard 608 bearing. That bearing will be used in the idler section of the Bowden extruder. You'll also need a, an M5 screw at approximately 10 millimeters in length. This screw will be used to hold the bearing in place. So the screw simply falls in place there, which then allows you to thread into the base of the idler section. We have various lengths of M3 screws. Up here we have a 25mm by M3 with matching washers and nuts. They are used to secure the base of the uh, Bowden mechanism to the frame of the 3D printer. We have two 10mm M3 screws with matching uh, washers and also a 15mm M3 screw. They are used to mount the base of the Bowden mechanism to the stepper motor. Uh, we have uh, two different options over here. The, both of these screws can be used to uh, secure the idler uh, to the Bowden base. So this is your tension adjustment. Um, I use a, an M3 by 15 screw uh, with a, a nut just in there to shorten it because I found with this setup I get just the right amount of tension by screwing that in there like so. Uh, and also in the base there is a M3 nut within that nut trap. 
However, you, if you wanted um, adjustable tension, so for example with the spring mechanism, uh, you can opt for a 25mm screw with a spring and washer and nut and so on just to adjust the length and adjust the tension like so. However, I use that one. And of course, we have the drive gears. Now there's quite a few different drive gears available on the market. Um, the drive gears that I have in front of us here are the Mark 7 drive gear. This is the gear that I've been using since I've switched over to the Bowden mechanism. But we also have the Mark 8 drive gear. So this gear has a, a smaller diameter than the Mark 7, but it also has a lot sharper teeth than the Mark 7. So this Mark 7, the teeth that are on there are quite shallow. Uh, they, this, these teeth I've rarely found to dig into the filament. The Mark 8 um, drive gear, however, because the teeth are quite sharp, when I'm printing with ABS plastic, that filament seems to be a bit softer than the PLA. I find the teeth grind into the filament more often than I like. Um, when that happens and I get plastic uh, stuck within the teeth of this drive gear, I start to experience inconsistent uh, feed flow because you get plastic grinding on plastic and it's just slipping. However, with the Mark 7 drive gear, because the, the teeth are quite shallow, I'm able to put a, a fair amount of tension on the idler up against the filament, which is up against the, uh, the Mark 7 gear, and I found I get no slipping, uh, very little to no uh, grinding of the filament, However, with the Mark 8, I've found I've constantly had to change the tension depending on um, the softness, I guess, of the filament that I'm printing with. Otherwise, it just seems to chew through the filament too much. And that's even with using the adjustable uh, idler screw. Uh, it didn't seem to make a difference. So, for me, I recommend sticking with the Mark 7 drive gear. We'll start with the Bowden idler. Simply pop in the bearing, insert the M5 screw, thread down the screw until it stops. Completed. Bearing spins nice and freely and is well secured. Attach the base of the Bowden mechanism to the top of the stepper motor. Line up the holes of the stepper motor with the holes of the base. Take uh, the M3 by 10 millimeter screw with washer and affix that to the top left and bottom left of the stepper motor. I leave the bottom right hole unpopulated as the access is obstructed by the idler locking mechanism. Take the idler and place that on top of the base. Take your 15 millimeter uh, M3 screw, push that down through the idler into the top right hand side, also screw that down into the stepper motor. It's now attached and secure and we have just enough play there to adjust the tension on the idler. To attach the Mark 7 uh, drive gear to the uh, stepper motor, simply align the grub screw of the drive gear with the flat of the shaft. Use an Allen key to tighten the grub screw to the flat of the shaft. You'll want to align the grub screw so as the teeth are lined up with the filament guide within the Bowden mechanism. You can see there it's too high, there it's too low, and there it's just right. Go ahead and tighten the grub screw in that position. And finally, we can thread the PTFE push fit connector to the top of the Bowden mount. Uh, the thread on the brass fitting here will carve a thread within uh, the top of the uh, Bowden mount, so make sure it's lined up straight and thread it in. Fix the Bowden mechanism to the Bowden supports on the Z-axis threaded rod using the two 25mm M3 screws with nuts and washers. To load the filament, simply pull back the idler bearing, insert the filament at the base of the Bowden extruder, slide the filament through the Bowden extruder, past the Mark 7 gear and into the Teflon tube. Manually slide through enough filament so the end of the filament is flush with the end of the Teflon tube. Push the idler bearing up against the filament 
Install the M3 by 15 screw into the idler. Tighten the screw, you know, quite, quite tight. Done. Filament is installed. Within the Marlin firmware, we need to update the number of steps to send to the extruder stepper motor. Change the number of E-steps to 100. That assumes you have your stepper motor driver at 16 microsteps. Set the stepper driver trim pot to 3 quarters. So rotate the trim pot until it's facing in this direction here. If the Bowden extruder stepper motor is moving in the wrong direction, Simply unplug the stepper motor connector from the ramps board, flip it around, and that will reverse the rotation of the stepper motor. Type the G-code command M302 and hit send. That will allow the cold extrusion feature to apply, otherwise you won't be able to extrude without the hot end being on. Extrude 50 millimeters of filament. Measure the extruded filament with a digital caliper. We're looking for 50 millimeters in this result. Looks like we're just a bit over. We're at 50.3 or so. So let's make another pass at the E steps in Marlin. To calculate the new steps that we need to insert into Marlin, we need to do a couple of quick calculations. We requested 50 millimeters. We measured 50.3 millimeters. So we divide the requested by the measured. So 50 divided by 50.3 gives us 0 0.994. The number of steps we currently have in the Marlin firmware is 100. So we need to times the number of steps by the difference. So that result times 100 gives us our new steps calculation. Let's go ahead and insert these new steps into Marlin. Back in the firmware, replace the 100 steps with 99.4, compile and upload to the Arduino, and let's test the E-steps again. Go ahead and reverse the filament so it lines up with the end of the PTFE tube, and once again, extrude 50 millimeters. Okay, take our trusty digital calipers, measure from the cutout of the tube to the end of the filament. Look at that. Close enough, 50.02. <laughs> We'll first loosen the filament from the Bowden extruder mechanism by unscrewing the idler bearing and sliding the bearing back. Preheat your hot end to the temperature of your plastic. The hot end is now up to temperature. Take your filament, uh, pull out another 5 or 10 centimeters or so, guide that down the E3D. You might encounter a sticky spot, just rotate the filament until it passes that. There we go. And push that through with your fingers until you start seeing plastic appear at the base. Once you see that, simply grab the uh, PTFE Teflon tube and push down. This tube goes down approximately 25 millimeters or about one inch into the hot end setup. That is now locked in place. And finally, re-tighten the Bowden idler bearing. Now you can test extruding some filament. That concludes the Bowden setup tutorial for my Prusa i3 3D printer. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you next time.